Welcome to the uh, Napoleonic live stream. Uh, again, I managed to do it on time. This is uh, this is again concerningly regular, but um, yes, thank you for joining me. And today, as the title suggests, we are going to be doing belts and braces. So mostly belts. Uh, what I am planning on doing today is I'm going to finish off the tops of all the bike horns. I wasn't sure whether they were white or whether they were black. So uh, I don't know when they were as well. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then I am uh, do all the cross straps. And we'll get these highlighted up a little bit. Now, I'm not going to go too much over time today. Because my sister and her family have to shoot off. And hopefully next week, I will be able to uh, to start the command. And we'll be able to finish off this uh, this battalion. So let's, uh, let's get cracking. Let's do the bicorns first. I'm going to use Black Templar for this. That's the Games Workshop um, contrast paint. So I'm going to crack that one open here. And we'll just start here and we'll go over. Now I've decided how I'm going to do the, um, uh, the bear skins or the seal skins. But uh, I'm not sure if I've got the paint on hand to do it yet. I'm going to do them with Rhinox Hide Brown. And I'm going to put a black wash over the top to tone down the brown and to get the detail going on. So I'm not going to do that. I used a uh, Lauren Forest and then the BL Tan Green wash for that one. So, um, yeah, I don't always use contrasts, but where possible, I tend to these days. So I'm going here. I'm just going to touch up some bits of the boots. Hello, Glenn. Nice to nice to see you, brother. Welcome to you as well. Oh, I've even done the backs of these guys' hats. So uh, let's see. He's a little bit loose on the old uh, paint and sticky, isn't he? I'm not going to do his hair now. The vast majority of these, I'm going to do their hair black when I get around to it. But uh, the officers, I'm going to keep their hair white, and I'm going to do it as if they're queued. Now, I don't know if um, Spanish officers in 1809, 1810, 1812, I don't know if they still powdered their hair or not, but uh, but these ones are going to. So I brought the camera down a little bit on the gimbal, and it's just uh, just getting a little bit in the way. So apologies if I knock it and, uh, and it starts wobbling. If I do knock it and I notice, I'll try and uh, try and steady it with my hand. So there we go, just a little bit of boot there that's not done. So again, this is quite good for just going back and uh, touching up any parts that you've missed. Just tuck in there underneath his uh, bearskin bag. As I said, I want to do the, uh, the bearskins with a brown, so it doesn't matter hugely if I get a little bit on there, because I'll be, uh, I'll be painting over it and it's going to be quite dark anyway. So it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Hello, Ricky. Hello, Barry. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, chaps. Glad to have you here as well, Barry. Poke that up there. I'll do the other side. Someone asked me um, in the week. I got a message sending what I've glued them to. This is actually a bamboo label. That you can buy like packs of. Uh, sorry about that, guys. I think my. I may um I may uh be doing it on uh, not on the Wi-Fi, but uh, if I if I notice it drop off again, then I'll uh, I'll just do it on its normal uh, on its normal data. So banging it through there. There we go. Jobs are good. Right. So that's the Grenadier and Commander stand. Yeah, so they're, uh, they're bamboo skewers. You put them in the ground uh, and you'll normally write what plants you've got growing in that area of the garden. But uh, in this case, they make quite good stands for gluing figures on. Because they're slightly bowed, they're not quite flat. They, um, they can help you get to parts of the model that can be quite difficult to reach. Uh, they take your thumb or your fingers in this case underneath quite nicely so let's get that done there make sure we do the top of the uh, the bicorn make sure we get plenty of paint on there with these contrast paints 
one of the uh, one of the keys is not to scrimp on the paints. Now, obviously, you want to you want to try and save paint. You want to try and save yourself some money. I get that, but uh, you'll end up with an effect that just doesn't look as good. So, you need to uh, not be shy. Slap it on. Okay, uh, is it dropping off? Uh, let me know, guys, because uh, I've got it on my laptop here. And it's it's horribly pixelated, but I think that's probably due to not getting great Wi-Fi up here. Oh, blimey. Well, it is cutting out, is it? Let me, uh, let me try this. Hang on. Very blurry and dropping off. Right, hopefully this will be... Uh, how is it now? Is that better? If you just uh, refresh your screens, then uh, hopefully it'll be uh, it'll be white. The uh, the attic really good for painting in because it gets it's got a, a west facing window. It's quite a big window. It's like a dormer window, so I get really good light in here. But uh, unfortunately, even though we've got a booster on the Wi-Fi, it uh, it does struggle to make it up here sometimes. But it is Talk Talk. It is the same company that was uh, run by the woman who did the NHS track track and trace app. So uh, that's better. Ah, good, good. And there we go. So we've not uh, not missed much. I've just been. Uh, Going through doing the hair and some hats. So, so what's everyone working on this evening? I, um, apart from doing these uh, this week, I've been reading a lot about the Polish campaign. And uh, it's for a video which probably won't be this weekend, but maybe the weekend after. And the more I read about it, so this is the, uh, the, the 1807 Polish campaign. After the defeat of pr the Prussians at Jena and their, uh, their surrender, it's basically the remnants of the Prussian army that joined up with the Russians and then fighting through Poland. And it's an absolutely fascinating period. It really is. So I'm really, really enjoying uh, researching it. I've just done the, uh, just been reading a lot about the Battle of Heiselberg. So anyone with, uh, with any cool or interesting. Uh, Nuggets of info about uh, the Battle of Heiselberg, let me know. It's quite focused. I'm doing another um, Napoleonic figures video, but uh, I'm always happy for uh, little tidbits. Matthew has only finished his first British infantry. Well, congratulations, buddy. Well done. So it's always a uh, a great first step. And Barry's sculpting dollies. Oh, lovely. What, uh, what are you sculpting, Barry? Are they Napoleonics or are they uh, are they something else? So that's the bicorns. I've done all the uh, the tops of them. Uh, I can be a little bit more uh, fast and loose with the uh, the sides here. I know uh, General Dan said that he was going to try and catch the. Uh, Catch a live stream today. So if you've got any questions about his uh, recipe for Austrians, then now's the, uh, now's the time to ask. It's become a bit of a running joke that whenever we do a live stream, someone always asks how we paint Austrians. And I always say, I don't know, <laughs> ask, ask Dan. So uh, if he's around, then uh, he's the man to ask. I think you should just copy and paste it and just put it on the uh, the chat whenever, uh, whenever I do one of these. Glenn, the French infantry continues. Uh, have decided to treat myself by painting a gun after I finished the battalion. Ah, very nice. I just uh, I started repainting all my artillery actually because the uh, the green I used was far too dark. I used dark angel green, and it should have been more of an apple green. So uh, I'm just repainting them, which normally I would hate, but I'm rebasing them anyway. So it's actually turned out quite nicely. Now I've got quite a lot of paint on this brush. I'm just trying to uh, to roll it all off. There we are. Benedict is doing something different. Picked up Cursed City. Oh, nice. Okay. 
No, 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 no boo hiss at all. I really like uh, some of those models. I really like the uh, the Grave Digger. He's very um, Silent Hill. I quite like him. And uh, is it Radukia or something? The uh, the vampire guy. He's a lovely model as well. But uh, no, 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 no. There's no uh, no G Dub hatred for me. In fact, I went down to Warhammer World on uh, Monday, on Bank Holiday Monday, and played a game of Warhammer Eighth Edition with my Empire against some. Chaos Dwarves, which is uh, which is a good game. It's part of a campaign that I'm in, and uh, the despite being outnumbered nearly two to one, the armies of the Empire were victorious. So I need to stop filming my battles. I may be more successful when I'm not uh, when I'm not filming. I don't know. So I'm now going to go on to the straps. Now you'll notice that the uh, the white on the models um, is it's a little bit off white. It's a little bit grayish. So I'm going to leave that as it is, and I'm going to do the straps with actual white. Now, for white, I use um, uh, Vallejo white because the Games Workshop white is pretty terrible. It tends to go very lumpy very quickly. Now, I believe I did these little guys last time, but I, I think I did them quite roughly. So I'm just going to tidy them up. I'm painting using the flat of the brush because that then allows the detail that's sculpted it on so the raised area of the straps that allows them to catch the paint they need to and it should mean that i don't um i don't go off piste that often now, something i just want to quickly check is on their facings there is that a white border i believe it is yeah it is so that's fine now for the officers it'll actually be silver so i don't need to do it for them but for the uh, the line I do, I've got my uh, Spanish armies of the Napoleonic Wars Osprey close at hand. All faithful as always. You can always just use Google as well as another uh, uh, another great um, resource. Google Images, and it's free. That's the most important thing. Uh, but I have to do some Russians. So looking to size the dollies to match the Perrys. Okay, fair enough. Any specific Russians? There's a, there's a definite lack of Perry sized slash priced Russian guard, actually. They're very similar to line Russians, but they had um, like some. They almost look like uh, gates, like five bar gates on their collars. They're very similar to World War II Germans. Uh, that's the, the what marks them out as guard. And uh, there's not that many models out there. You can always paint them on, I suppose. But uh, it'd be nice to have some modeled on. So I'm just doing his hand there. Now, again, I wasn't sure whether Spanish officers wore gloves, but uh, mine are. So I've decided that they're going to wear gloves. There we go. Let's just do uh, the back of his thumb here. I've got a bit of, uh, bit of facing onto his glove there. There we go. Happy with that. Um, what do I think of the new Dutch Belgian models Warlord has announced? Is that the um, is that for Epic or, or for uh, regular? Well, I say regular twenty eight mil. I've seen the um, the Prussians for Epic, but I've not really seen anything else. I may have to have a quick uh, a quick squint before we end the uh, before we end the stream tonight. Then I've not seen those. So I'm doing the strap here again. I'd normally use the side the flat of the brush. But uh, the uh, the camera's getting in the way a little bit. So here we are. It's probably a bit better, isn't it? I'll do the back of him there. Just bring that down to the strap. There we go. That's from there. I'm going to do his strap under the epaulette there, so that's why I'm not uh, not going up there. So we'll go on to the grenadiers now. So again, we'll use a flat of the brush. Now these are just uh, just Games Workshop brushes I use. I don't go for any fancy Windsor Newtons or anything like that. And I do that for two reasons. One is I absolutely wreck brushes. I don't look after them properly. Uh, I know I should, but you know I, I don't. So there's no point in me getting a really expensive brush because I'll knacker it super quickly. Although, you know, you could say, well, if you get an expensive brush, you might look after it more. So there is that. 
And the second and more important reason is when Games Workshop um, redid their entire paint range, they sent out, I was working for Games Workshop at the time, and they sent out a, a sort of uh, a pack to get people interested in trying out the new paints. So we got two uh, plastic um, like bags with I think 20 brushes in and uh, they were like yeah you know you can use these to uh, to let people use them and demonstrate the new paints and things like that so I used a pack and then kept <laughs> kept a pack for myself now don't, don't tell the uh, don't tell anyone at Gaz Workshop that so I've actually got tons of these brushes which uh, didn't cost me anything so that's nice that's why uh, I tend to use them We had uh, a regular brush, a wash brush, and a base coat brush. I think, and like two packs of each. So uh, that was quite a, quite a haul. Although I, I must say, I am coming to the end of them. Uh, so here we go again, using the flat of the brush. The paint was a little bit, uh, a little bit watery there. So I've actually got it in the crease between this cross strap and that strap, which is where the, uh, which is the pack. So that's a bit of a shame. I could go back in there with either either do a pin wash. So that's a wash that's in a very specific low area. I could go in there and paint it with some Corax white. Or I can do what I'm probably going to do and just ignore it. He's going to be one guy out of 24. And I don't think anyone's going to notice the uh, the one strap there that's uh, that's been a bit overzealous with the white. So... Uh, for 20 mil, no, I have not seen the Wall of Dutch Belgians. I'm going to have to check those out before the end of the stream, then I'll have to give you my first impressions when uh, when I see them. To be honest, as a general rule, I mean, well, as a general rule, Waterloo is not really my uh, my focus. And the Dutch Belgians of Waterloo, even less so. But uh, the uh, the Belgian Carabinier is very nice. I shall, uh, I shall have a look at them. Because I know that... Uh, that they're very popular. So certainly Richie, our uh, game guy, he's a he's a huge fan of the uh, the Dutch Belgians at Catrabra. He's his uh, his big big baby. He loves Catrabra. Um, good, happy with that. Bring that there. Uh, to be honest, I wouldn't buy a scarf made of weasel fur, so I'm not going to buy a silver return. <laughs> no, that's fair enough. I was once given, as a rather bizarre present, I once was given a mink, uh, like a dead one. Uh, that was very, I'm not really sure why. But uh, yeah, I was given a, a, a sort of a stuffed mink, but one that wasn't stuffed. So it was just sort of a, the skin of a mink, which uh, was, yeah, very weird. But uh, it's very soft. I can uh, I can appreciate why people like uh, like mink because it was very uh, it was very soft. That's for sure. So how are we getting along with these straps? Not too bad. Uh, let's do his downward straps. There we go. I may have to do a couple of these off camera, just because they're very. Uh, they're in sort of awkward places for me to get to with the brush while the uh, the camera's hovering over them. So apologies in advance for that, but uh, it shouldn't shouldn't take too long. I like these little um, match striker things that they've got on their chest. They're very cool. They're going to look nice when they've painted them brass, but they're uh, they're quite annoying when it comes to painting the straps. Let's get this over here. There we go. Pop this one down there. Nicely done. Now you can see there's a real gradation on this figure in particular. Between, let me get him up to the camera. Uh, oh, real. See my hands nice and in focus, but uh, these guys aren't. But you can see the real grayish between the gray of the uniform 
and the white of the straps. Maybe it's maybe a little bit too strong for me. I may end up having to go back in with a bit of Corax white because the Corax white plus the uh, the white shade is maybe a little grey. It's almost like a pike grey. It's um, it'd be good for painting Austrian uh, Austrian Jaegers. Um, maybe another wash of uh, of the apothecary white might uh, might darken them down a little bit and make them uh, make them good for Jaegers. I mean, not not these figures, just the colour as a way of getting, as I say, that pike grey, as it's known. I assume it's pike grey as in the fish, not uh, some long spears. Uh, thank you, Archie. I shall check those out later on. I hadn't noticed that you had, but I have to say, uh, I've not been doing a huge amount uh, this last week uh, because I've just been so tired. The uh, Easter holiday weekend was nice, but I was so exhausted. I didn't really do anything. Uh, so there we go. And on the back here. So sorry, as I say, I'm just going to do a little bit off camera. Not uh, actually, no, no, I should be all right. Put them down here. Are you still painting these? I thought I was still. Well, absolutely, Clive. I'm only doing them on the stream now. So this is currently the fifth hour I've been painting these. So they're going to be hopefully pretty much ready to go at the end of the next hour. Um, so next week we'll be looking at doing all the brown. So I'll be the packs, the bear skins, and I'll be doing the socks as well. Do more streams. <laughs> well, you know, you know what, mate? I would love to. Unfortunately, uh, the NHS needs my invaluable contribution. I don't think so. But uh, I don't know what's going on with our place. Around. All the consultants are on uh, on Holly Bobs. Uh, I think it's the first time they've been able to go to their uh, Swiss chalets or. Uh, Holiday homes in the Maldives or whatever. So, uh, well, one of our uh, radiographers, he uh, he went over to Japan uh, to see his family there from uh, from Japan, and uh, they wouldn't let him in. They uh, tested his temperature at the border, and uh, they wouldn't let him in. So, it was a bit of a shame. And he, he is Japanese as well, so. He ended up going to Singapore. All right, where are we? Let's bang this strap on there. Bang that strap there. I finished my first printed Polish regiment. I just need to the bases down. Yeah, I backed those poles actually. I've not even uh, not even looked at them. my three um, D printer. You can't hear it chugging away in the background today because it's actually finally given up the ghost. So the uh, the Anycubic uh, Photon uh, Z is now no more. Uh, I will be getting another one. Uh, I, I'll be getting another Anycubic, actually, for those of you who are into 3D printing. Uh, I will be getting another one at some point, uh, a much bigger one. So it was a good entry-level one. It served me well. It's banged out a Württemberg army in addition to hundreds of other uh, figures and projects. So I can't complain too much. But... Uh, I can fog you some prints. Well, you know, bring them along, man. Bring them along. So. You never have too many... Uh, you never have too many poles. Both in uh, in wargaming and in life, I find. There we go. So bang that on there. Lovely. Happy with that. That is the, uh, the Elite Company. And the two standard bearers. That's all their straps done. He's a little. He's very grey. This chap here. So he uh, he may end up getting a uh, a bit of a spruce up. In fact, they probably all will. Uh, this guy here, you can see, I've gone. The wash has run down onto his trousers, which, to be honest, did happen. I've heard um, a lot of reports about the British in uh, in the peninsula, in particular. Uh, if it rained, they all their straps and belts would go pink. From where the red dye has run 
the uh, the reason the the British wore red. There's a uh, people who say, oh, it's to disguise the blood from the injuries. That's potentially partly true. But the actual reason is because the new model army wore red. Uh, and the new model army wore red because it was the cheapest die. So uh, if it's the cheapest die, it's probably not very well fixed. Now, when you fix a die, that's what stops it running. So it wasn't that well fixed. So that's why when it rains, uh, it tends to go everywhere. But uh, the New Model Army, of course, founded by Oliver Cromwell, who was a, well, I mean, maybe not founded by him, but certainly spearheaded by him. Uh, and he was a good Puritan, so he's not going to be uh, wasting money on fripperies. Yeah, red cloth was the cheapest one, so that's what you went for. I used to have a speed paint holy white for my Austrians. I like it. Use army speed paint. All right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've not used any of the army painter uh, speed paints. But um, I, should, I mean, that's not because, uh, you know, I'm, oh, yes, I'm going to workshop. No, it's, it's not that. I, just, I haven't got around to getting any yet. We've had an Element Games open in Sheffield, um, and they sell a really good range of paints. But uh, to be honest, it's in the city centre, and it's sad to say I don't really go into the city centre much these days. Um, now this strap runs alongside the uh, the backpack strap, so that's definitely worth a uh, definitely worth using the flat of the brush. You don't want to be using the point if you can avoid it, because you just a uh, a single slip, especially if you've got the hands as shaky as mine. You just a uh, a shake away from actually getting in the gap between the two and you'll lose that definition these models perhaps aren't the most uh, the most detailed in the world so where is model on you want to try and keep that definition as much as possible this paint's drying out it's quite warm up here I see them at Richie's. Well, yeah, I mean, that's all well and good, but if uh, if we played an actual interesting battle, we could even get them on the tabletop. But, uh, no, just uh, more French. Mm, amazing. Let's, uh, let's do this. This is a bit of a test bed for uh, when I get around to my Italians as well, because I obviously he wore, uh, wore their white uniforms. Well, the guard wore green. I've done the guard already. <laughs> no, I agree, Clive. I agree. I'm there with you, brother. So for those of you who don't know, this is our uh, our friend who lives uh, near Newcastle. And he uh, he's the, the chap with all the figures. So it's, uh, it's his barbecue. So we decide what he wants to do. We do this. Sorry, we do what he decides he wants to do, and he's a big hundred uh, hundred days nut. So rather than do some of the what I would consider more interesting battles, uh, he wants to do the hundred days. That's what we're doing now. Those of you who saw the Catra game that we did, so that was across the whole weekend. I live streamed the whole event. You'd be pleased to know that very very soon, I'll be doing. We'll be doing the same again, but this time we'll be doing Linny. So. The uh, the guys are frantically painting up Prussian units, uh, and I'm frantically painting up General Van Dam, who will be throwing them out of uh, a very confusingly named villages. Is it uh, Saint Armand La Haye? Is where uh, Van Dam attacked. Uh, I suggest again using lockdown painter figures. Yeah, that would have been interesting. Yeah. Although, to be fair, I didn't really get a lockdown, unfortunately. I had to go into work every day. So uh, I wouldn't have had much to play with. Uh, 
But yes, if you've not seen the uh, the Catra Bra game, I would recommend checking it out uh, because, as I say, the Linny game's coming up. That's going to be a bit of an event. Uh, there's a surprise twist. You've got to watch it right to the end because uh, I think it's going to turn into a bit of a campaign and something happens that will be pivotal to the rest of the campaign. So, yeah, check that out on the channel. Just search for Catra Bra. I think uh, I've done a. I think I've done it in a playlist, uh, so you should be able to uh, to check those out, and uh, yeah, treat yourself to uh, to a weekend of. Uh, I mean, uh, Richie's figures are absolutely stunning. They're painted by a chap in Spain whose name escapes me, but I know he's uh, made a lot of Kickstarters where they've done STL files to print Napoleonic minis. These 170 second scales. No, they're not. I think it is David, yes. Um, no, they're not 177. They're 28 mil, but they are a little on the small side. Uh, they are the Warlord Games uh, Spanish, who were originally, I want to say, from Three Armies, which was a company that did uh, 1806 Prussians. He, these Spanish, and I think they might have done... Saxons, maybe, possibly not, but I think there is something like that. I'm not 100% certain. There we go. So that's them done. Now, ooh, hang on, I say that's them done. No, it's not. That's uh, that was shocking. So here we are. Yeah, I, I, they are very nice. I, I thought they were a little expensive. I'm not going to lie. They, uh, I thought I'm not going to back them right now. Because they seemed a little pricey. Uh, I think I was probably spoiled by piano miniatures and the the Wurttemberg campaigns, because they were uh, such ridiculously good value for money. I th I felt that David's were uh, a little bit uh, a little bit on the expensive side. So I'm just going to go in and do the strap now. You can actually see the front of the strap. On some of these muskets, I'm not sure how uh, physically uh, plausible that is, but uh, we'll do it as we see it. You may also make the model not look as good because it might look like, like you've missed bits. But uh, there we are. We can only do what we can do. Around there. Around there. Cool. So, happy with them so far. Now, what time are we on? 25 to 7, lovely. So I've got just under half an hour left. What we're going to look at now is I'm going to do all the muskets. Now, I don't know why, but I the muskets are one of the uh, the parts on the model I absolutely hate. So, but it's I live in Sheffield when the snooker is on, moderately jealous. You know, I actually worked at the Crucible one year. So uh, I used to be a, uh, I spent a year as a primary school teacher. And um, it, I realised that it was very, very much not for me. So uh, in between uh, jobs there, I, uh, I came back to Sheffield. That was down in um, in Fairham, actually. Uh, so in between uh, in between jobs, I came back to Sheffield. And I got a job working at the bar for the Crucible. So we went to... Uh, so uh, we also had to do the door stuff as well. And uh, yeah, it was it was all right. Actually, it was the year that um, the Australian guy won it, and uh, we all went to the after party, which was uh, superb. That was really good. I remember, I was about um, I don't know, I was pretty old. I was about thirty at the time, and I think it's probably the latest I've ever been out partying, because when we left the hotel, it was like people were going to work the next morning. It was. Uh, it was pretty extreme. So uh, now I've got quite quite fond memories of uh, of snooker at the Crucible actually. Also, I had a good laugh with um, uh, who's the one who everyone says is really boring, um, Steve Davis. Uh, he's actually quite uh, quite good fun. 
One guy I was a little bit disappointed by was Tony Durego. He was a bit of a dickhead, though. So, uh, I mean, maybe he was having an off day. I don't know. You have the commercial license to make some of the money back. Yeah, well, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not confident in the quality of my uh, my printing to go for uh, commercial licenses. To be honest, although with my new printer and uh, a larger um, a larger print base, it might be something that I look at. You met Stephen Hendry the day after you went. Oh, okay, was he as uh, entertaining in real life as he uh, appears in interviews and things like that? He is a dour, dour man. Well, that's how he comes across, anyway. I hate musket painting too and tartan. Yeah, no, no. I, uh, uh, tartan's a funny one actually. I've done. Tw I've got twenty four figures in um, my. Well, I, uh, so most of my British battalions twenty four figures. The guard I've done slightly bigger at thirty two. And the Argyle and Southern Highlanders were an absolutely huge battalion at um, Frontest Honoro. They had about 800, 800 guys in the battalion. They're so definitely a large one. So I need to do another uh, at least eight figures, probably 12 in that battalion. And I, I really enjoyed painting their tartan. It's quite a nice tartan. But uh, the fact that I haven't done them in the last sort of five years shows that maybe I don't really like uh, I <laughs> like doing the tartan. Missed a bit on the musket there. Oh dear. I'll have to go back and do that later. Uh, you had a Merc in the garage. Reg Q4. He's <laughs> on. It reminds me of a. Um, uh, there was a. Uh, Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares where a guy had, like number one chef or something. And he made him sell his personalised number plate, which uh, <laughs> was just pretty hilarious. Painted 10 battalions of Scots in the last three. Jeez, Louise. Yeah, right. And you're a guy who hates painting tartan. Well, I'm very impressed. Were they, uh, well, lots of those uh, lowlanders with the uh, the true... Oh, I don't know. I actually did uh, lowland Scottish regiments. Did they wear just white or grey trousers or did they wear trues? I don't. I don't really know, to be honest. I'm sure someone on here will. Clive, you may know. I just, um, uh, I just do the Highlanders. They're the only ones I'm. Uh, I'm really interested in. There. So let's uh, just crack this along there. I've actually got some First World War Highlanders to paint as well. I'm quite looking forward to doing those, but uh, it's just finding the time really. Lovely stuff. So that's those muskets done. Take quite as long as I thought it would, actually. So that's uh, a nice, uh, nice Brucey bonus. Ten battalions of Scots. So that is very impressive. I might. Uh, I've got a couple of boxes of Victrix. I might give to you. Did it for money? <laughs> no, that's fair enough. Then. Yeah, yeah. I imagine a commission painters. Uh, they must paint more tartan. Then uh, the Highland Trust, because no one wants to paint their own uh, their own Highland regiments. I would have thought. I was up in Edinburgh uh, a couple of months ago, actually, and I went to Edinburgh Castle. Uh, again, still a great museum. Actually, really enjoyed Edinburgh Castle. Uh, and the at the end of the Royal Mile, just to, before you get to the car park of the. Uh, the car park of the castle uh is a um it's kind of kind of like a like a souk almost but for highland tat and uh, we went in there and i was temp very tempted to get myself a liverpool scottish uh tartan um like pashmina but uh i, I saw i said oh yeah i'll go back and get it and i never did it in the end but uh, I had a coffee in there. Now, I drink latte. That is my uh, my coffee of choice. And I have to say, it was without doubt the best latte I've ever had. It was absolutely incredible. So there you go. If you're ever in Edinburgh and you want a decent cup of coffee, 
yeah, I recommend the top floor of the sort of the Highland Souk that's just next to the um, just next to the castle. Honestly, I I I, I just I, yeah, it was it was so good. Now I've just noticed as I'm painting these muskets, there's quite a bit of flash on the top, uh, and it does not want to come off with my clippers, which probably says more about the sharpness of my clippers than anything else. But uh, still, I'm not very, uh, not very thrilled with that. It's missy. I bought a siege. <laughs> No, the uh, the Richardsons are uh, very much not uh, Scottish uh, Scottish people. Quite quite the opposite, in fact. P. Dot Camo is my most requested hateful. <laughs> well, I'm sad to hear you say that because I was going to message you after the show. No, I wasn't really. Although I was, um, I am doing. I, mean, I do have a load of SS to paint actually, uh, and I am putting it off a little to be honest actually i quite enjoy painting the uh the p dot i'm not sure it looks any good and i think if i was doing it for money i probably would be a lot more concerned about it but uh no i quite enjoy it actually i've got some uh, I, I put in an order with peter pig over lockdown and they were like oh yeah you know thanks for supporting us during this time because of that uh here's like you know next time you order you can have 20 percent off in the original order, I think, oh, it might be more. It might be twenty five percent off. In the original order, I think, I, you know, I ordered. Uh, I think I ordered four. Um, uh, no, what did I ordered. It wasn't even the Calliopes. I ordered something anyway. Uh, something that came to about twenty quid. And then the next order I put in was uh, two hundred and fifty because <laughs> I got the the discount. And uh, a lot, a lot of that was uh, German World War Two cavalry. I wanted to do a reconnaissance, uh, Flames of War reconnaissance battalion. And uh, I thought, you could do them in motorbikes, that's cool. Or you could do something different. So I went for uh, for horse cavalry. And they're, they're still in the box. I also bought myself a uh, an army for Art de la Guerre of Parthians. So, I mean, I've got all, all the horses uh, ready to come. But uh, again, they're... Well, actually, no, the Parthians, I did the uh, their, their camp. I don't know if anyone... Has anyone played... Art de la Guerre. They did do a Napoleonic version of it as well. Uh, it was very popular down at our, our wargaming club, the Art de la Guerre. It seems to have dropped off a little bit now. Um, people seem to be playing uh, a lot of Saga at the moment, so which I have to say has never really, uh, never really tickled my taste buds. Although I'm told it's very good. Uh, it's a Scottish name, isn't it? No, well, Richardson, no, it's... Um, uh, yes, Neil, they are Spanish. Um, it's a Danish name, actually, uh, Richardson. Uh, it's, uh, it's a sort of a Viking-y name. But uh, from what I can tell, we, uh, we're a bit of a Midlands clan. Uh, so uh, we've got a, a little bit of a military history as well. So... Uh, I'm not saying that we took part in the Highland clearances, but uh, I'm certainly not not saying that. Uh, uh, hello, Dees. Uh, love the 18067 Polish campaign. It has it all. You know what, Donald? The more I read about it, the more I completely agree with that statement. Um, it's got uh, you know loads of different nations taking part uh, with a lot of sort of unprofessional, in quotes, behaviour. It's got uh, hot Polish countesses. It's got crazy Saxons in bicorns. It's got Bavarians. It's got Russians doing Russian-y stuff. It's got uh, Russians uh, uh, making these massive fortifications that the French have to assault. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's got huge charges by Murat. It's got loads of crazy stuff. So, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm really enjoying the uh, the Polish campaign. One of the um, one of the accounts I read was of a uh, I think this is the Battle of it was either Gutstadt, which is something else I should mention. The campaign's got it's got awesome, the fun German word to say as well. So I think it was the Battle of Gutstadt where uh, I was reading an account of a guy who'd been hit by canister, and it was pretty grim. The uh, the Grand Duke Constantine Uhlans found him, and the the sapper in the end who was a Swede. Had to uh, had to put him out of his misery. Yeah, that was a yeah, that was a tough tough passage to read that one. 
See you later, Clive. Good to see you, buddy. Those sticks can be cleaned with just warm water and a quick wipe, and they're ready to use again. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. I have a Romanian Flames of War cavalry army. Never won a game with <laughs> Yeah, you're not selling it to me, man. I've got a um, a Japanese army with a lot of cavalry, in, and uh, I don't think I've ever won a game with my Japanese either. Starting to understand why Picton's division was left unclaimed for our club event in June. <laughs> so that said, Matthew, that said, I can see that as well. There's a lot of a uh, lot of tartan in there, but they are, for my money, by far the coolest uh, division in Wellington's army. The Fighting Third, absolutely awesome. I love them. So that's um. Well, I'm at, it looks like I might be about to cut it a little bit short today. Um, what time are we on? We're on uh, ten to ten to seven. What I'm going to do is I've not brought any paints up with me to do much more. Let me just have a check here. I might have uh, a little something something. Uh, hang on, hang on. Uh, no, no, I don't. So what I'll do is as a special bonus. Is I've got some uh, some dudes here. I can do a bit of black on. Give me a second. Winds and Newton inks are great in doing contrast. All right, okay, okay. Good night, Barry. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, see you again next week. Uh, you're missing the great, uh, the great revealer. This is what I've been painting off stream. So uh, these are some front rank. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm going to do these guys as yet. I bought them from eBay, so there's a real mix. They've all got the coal packs on, and they've all got the light infantry boots on. So they're definitely light infantry. I'm not sure whether to do them as just normal uh, French light infantry. Or whether to do them as Italians. Not quite decided yet. If you can think of any other battalions that I could do. Thought about doing them as Irish. Thought about doing them as the Prince de Neuchâtel. I've had loads of ideas. Which is why I've only been painting the uh, sort of the bits that are same on everyone. So wherever you're from, you're going to have a brown wooden musket. You're going to have a black shako. You're going to have a black coal pack. Your boots are going to be black. So that's why I'm just doing this at the moment, and then I can make the decision when I get later into the uh, when I get later into the process. So I've got these three to do here. I'll do the coal packs and I'll do the boots and the uh, the ammunition pouches, and then we we'll can call it a day. I don't really know many. Um, I mean, they may end up being divided across a whole load of battalions. You see, we've got some in the Shakos. Uh, and one here in the bonnet de police. So they've not all got uh, they've not all got the coal packs on, and they're not even all light infantry. These guys, you can see, he's got the full gaiters on. So he's probably a grenadier. Now I may end up doing him as a carabineer for the uh, the light infantry battalion. So if you don't know, uh, your French infantry they had um, four line companies, four centre companies. They had a light company known as a leger company. And a grenadier company, so they were the uh, like the elite assault troops. Now the grenadiers, uh, now sorry, now the French also had light infantry battalions as well. So the everyone in that was a leger. So they had to think of a funky name for their elite companies. So their light company, so they're sort of extra light specialists. They became the voltigeurs or the voltigeurs. I've also heard it pronounced. Uh, I'm certainly not going to um, correct anyone's French. That is for certain. Uh, so, yeah, Voltigeurs were the light infantry. And then the heavy infantry, the grenadiers of a light battalion, were known as the carabineers. Not to be uh, not to be mistaken with the cavalry carabineers, who were uh, something a little bit different. Evening, Brush and Quill. You are joining us just as we're finishing up, I'm afraid, buddy. But it's nice to see you. I'm just, uh, just running down the clock, doing some of these, just enjoying hanging out with you guys. Uh, just doing a bit more black on these. So hopefully, I think we're supposed to be having a barbecue tonight. I don't know. 
Hopefully that's been started while I've been hiding up here, but uh, I very much doubt it. Uh, I said I was going to do the coal packs as well, so let's quickly grab those. Although this, mm, I'm not going to not going to do them yet because I think this brush is going to be too big. I'm going to try and avoid getting it on the cords if I can. Um, no, the stream is not the barbecue. Well, it, it'll be a shame if the barbecue's not on as well because I'm absolutely Hank Marvin, and we won't be uh, won't be eating until near eight o'clock if it's not been started yet. Uh, but uh, I've been teaching my so. Uh, I suggested, uh, probably foolishly, that my uh, sister, myself, and my niece and nephew, that we go to Laser Quest tomorrow. So I've been uh, teaching my uh, nephew and niece some uh, some combat hand signals, but uh, I have a feeling they're both going to gang up and shoot me in the back anyway. Uh, uh, doing Russians 8th Division, Prussian and Suchet's 5th Corps, all for 1807. Oh, that's fantastic. No, that's really cool. Uh, again, something that I didn't really know was how much of a... Um, how much of a role the Prussians played in the Polish campaign as well. So I think tonight uh, my bedtime reading is going to be, because I've got it up here, um, he says, it's going to be... Um, hmm, I may have to dig it out. It's going to be Napoleon's Polish Gamble anyway. Uh, I'm going to try and get a bit more, uh, a bit more info on the uh, the Napoleonic figure that I'm currently writing the script for. Again, he's a fascinating guy. The thing I always find with these Napoleonic figures is, I think, you know what, this guy, he's, he sounds pretty interesting. I'll do one on him. And then the more you find out about these people, the more interesting they become. And it's an absolute nightmare. I mean, I think uh, at the moment, this script is probably a good, it's probably a good 40 minutes. And I've not even got to the end of the Polish campaign yet. Uh, so he's still got a good uh, seven or eight years of warring to go. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's <laughs> it may end up having to be a two-parter. Right, yeah, see you later, Ben, Nick. Nice to, uh, nice to see you, buddy. I am going to be uh, shooting off shortly as well. So let's just get this done. Now, with the, these guys... They have their uh, bonnet de police underneath, or it might be a uh, pocolem. Their hat, anyway. They have it tucked to the bottom of their cartridge pouch. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I always just paint it black together with the cartridge pouch. I'm not messing about with the with something like that. Uh, did you do his brothers? Uh, are you staying at six or moving the stream to seven? Are we keeping it at six at the moment, Archie? Um. I asked if, if uh, people wanted me to move it to seven. And to be honest, it didn't seem to be that popular. So I'm like, oh, okay, I mean, fair enough. It's not uh, it's not the end of the world. For me, it means that I can still do stuff in the evening. So it's not too bad. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's um, at the moment it's going to stay at six. Um, that may change, but uh, I, I'm not planning on changing it at the moment. Oh, Napoleon's Brothers, right, okay. Uh, I haven't done these brothers yet, actually. I'm trying to do it on sort of the lesser-known figures. Uh, but that said, uh, they are they are fascinating guys in of themselves. I love the, uh, I'm going to make you king of Italy. And Joseph's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. And I was like, or, or, would you like to be king of Spain? He's like, oh, yeah, that sounds much better. So, uh, yeah, I quite like, uh, I quite like Joseph for that. Uh, Just painted Jerome as Joseph. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I did the same thing, actually. Uh, yeah, who, who cares about Jerome, loser? Uh, no, no, I did... Uh, I want to do a command base with um, Suchet and uh, Jerome on it. But uh, I just... I, you know, I'm, I'm doing a bunch of command bases at the moment, actually. I'm doing a 3D-printed Napoleon one, which, uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed with. Because Napoleon, it's not quite nice. Napoleon is resting his telescope on the shoulder of a, a Chasseur Cheval of the Guard. That's quite nice. 
but he is like stood straight looking through the telescope and the telescope is on the shoulder of the chasseur. So unless Napoleon was like five foot two and the chasseur is like seven foot three, it, uh, it just looks a little bit silly to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it, the uh, sort of the sculptor was like you know well you know Napoleon was only short uh, but you know uh, everyone who's a Napoleon fan will say no no he wasn't so I don't know if he was thinking that or if uh, he just didn't uh, didn't really pay the right amount of attention to how the finished thing was going to look I'm not entirely sure right here we are finally getting to the end of these boys. Like I say, let me know in the comments or in future comments what regiment you think I should do these guys as. They're going to be all uh, all light infantry. So it's got to be someone who wore funky light infantry uniforms. The uh, the current options are uh, New, New Chatel, which was um, Bertier's sort of pr uh, personal regiment. Uh, so possibly them. Possibly the Irish um god save ireland and all that stuff uh or uh, i'm also tempted to buy the croats they could be a uh, uh, a croat regiment or something completely off the wall anyone's got any ideas let me know in the comments the royal irish yeah well exactly yeah well there was there were um uh the irish regiments that fought for the french the uh, i think it was the second uh, I think they were uh, the basis of the second foreign legion, or or something like that. But uh, yeah, certainly the Legion Ayolandes, who'd been. Uh, I mean, the Irish had been fighting for the French since, uh, uh, well, since forever. Really, it was certainly since Louis the Fourteenth. So. Maybe uh, the Regiment of Joseph. Yeah, that, that's another potential. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, whatever it is, I'm going to need to buy some more to finish them off anyway. I am wanting to put in an order with Front Rank. Now they're back up and running. Uh, it's just a question of uh, of getting around, of finding the money, to be honest. Uh, Illyrian Regiment. Yeah, that's that's the, uh, that's the an alternative. Um, I said Croats. I probably meant the... Uh, I think I meant the Illyrians rather than the Croats. Or the Croats, as I uh, I used to pronounce them. Which makes them sound like uh, some sort of fantasy race, the Croats. But, uh, maybe some out of Star Trek. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm still... Uh, as I say, that's the reason why I'm not painting the coats yet. I'm just painting the bits that are going to be almost universally the colors i may end you know i'll do the packs next i'll do the metal on the muskets so uh, there's no uh, no massive rush i may end up just doing a french to be honest so i didn't find a uniform with quick google so yeah no me neither that's why i'm still uh, still a little bit unsure on them they may end up being a sort of a bit of a well there's not a huge amount of uh data about this regiment so i'm going to they were classed as light infantry so i'm going to do them as that it may end up being something like that I bought them because they were on eBay and they were super cheap. So uh, it's not necessarily in the world. They may end up just being distributed amongst uh, amongst French light infantry units anyway, particularly if I start looking at uh, earlier campaigns, something like Poland or uh, or perhaps um, the old uh, Danube campaign, something like that. I just found the Italian Royal Guard. Yeah, I've, well, I've done the um, Italian Royal Guard Grenadiers, uh, and then there's still the V-Lights or Velite or however you want to pronounce it, I need to do as well. So uh, we shall see. And with that, let me just pop the end of uh, his briquette. And the uh, this guy, speaking of briquettes, it's time for me to uh, to go. I've got to factor in the time to uh, click the uh, uh, click the uh, the holders like twice as well. That's because you know you can't do a barbecue without uh, clicking them to make make sure they work. So uh, there we go. That's the end of his coal pack. They're all done. 
That's lovely stuff. Well, I just want to say thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, it's, not, it's been a little bit of a low energy one, so apologies for that. But uh, we've got all the uh, the straps done. These Spanish are looking really nice. I'm going to pop them on the uh, on the old painting mat before we go. So I think next time I'm going to wash the muskets. I'm going to re-highlight the cloth so we get a little bit more white on there. Uh, and then we'll do the bear skins or the seal skins, however you want to pronounce it. And we'll uh, we'll take it from there. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next Wednesday for another live stream as we get these Spanish one step closer to uh, running away from the battlefield. Have a good, e <laughs> Have a good evening, guys. I'll see you soon.